Shalom, saints. Just want to share a few thoughts. But before that, a quick word of prayer. Father in heaven, I pray that you would bless your people, that you would draw us out of deep waters, that you would be our strength and our wisdom, that you would anoint us with eye salve that we might see your hand at work in what's happening all around us. In Yahushua's holy name, let it be done according to your word, so be it. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Saints, I'm coming here because there are so many things that are going on right now that we need to be prayerful about and thoughtful about. We need to pause all of the busyness of our lives and look to the hills from whence cometh our help and recognize that our help cometh from Yahuwah, who made heaven and earth. So, I've seen a lot of I've seen a lot of troubles. Troubles are just rolling. And although many of us are still making it day to day, we don't understand that a time is coming soon when we will not be making it day to day, where we will go to the stores and not find the things that we want and that we need, that we will not be able to afford gasoline for our vehicles any longer because those increases are coming the the geopolitical events are spiraling out of control but they're not spiraling out of everyone's control they're spiraling out of our control ordinary men and women young people children who are just going about trying to do our everyday life and we're reaching a time where the going about trying to do the everyday life, it's getting late in the day to just act like, let me just go about and do the ordinary things that I've always done. I did this yesterday, so I'm gonna do this today. It's getting very late in the day for that. I am learning that every single thing that we do needs to be committed to the Most High, and to prayer. Everything that we do, we need to seat ourselves before his throne, or stand rather, before his throne of grace, get on our knees and ask for mercy and grace to help in the time of need. And we need to recognize that that time of need has come. We may have jobs and we may be earning what we feel to be good incomes and we may have large 401ks and we may have, you know, full pantries, full refrigerators and full freezers. We may think we have everything that we need, We may think that we have led well-ordered lives, civilized lives, that we're not in a bad case like some of the people around us because we had the good sense to have made better decisions. But we need to understand that the Most High is very angry with this society, with this nation. He's very angry with this planet, and he is bringing judgment, great judgment against every sphere, every sector, every nation, every people group, and every family. If it hasn't hit your house yet in a direct and tangible way that you can readily articulate, that you can show, don't worry, your time is coming. It's not coming because I'm a hater. It's coming because this is a season of judgment. This is not a season for play and frivolity and silliness. And I'm not saying that we need to be serious every last moment of our lives. But we're walking before the face of the Most High Yahuwah. Are we being good stewards of what the Father has given us? Are we subjecting our own wills and whims and impulses and preferences and lusts to what the Most High wants for us? Or are we being driven by our desires and urges and moving to try to make our kingdom here? Are we terrified at the impending doom of this kingdom? If so, that's a heart problem. It's a heart problem that Revelation 21.8 talks about. The fearful and unbelieving shall find their place in the lake that burneth with fire. If we're afraid, we need to ask ourselves why we're afraid. Yes, there are horrible things on the horizon and horrible things that are happening. 
But doesn't the scripture say, and did not the Apostle Paul say, that we walk by faith and not by sight? Why are we walking by what we see instead of by what we hear from the Most High Yahuwah? Do we not believe in Him? Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. By it, the elders obtained a good report. Noah, being warned of Yah, uh, of things not seen as yet, moved with fear. He wasn't afraid of the circumstances. He didn't say, this is frightening me. He was moved with fear about what Yahuwah said, that he would bring judgment on the planet. And he did everything the Father told him to do. That man is an emblem a billboard of faith 4,500 or so years after his life. And what are we doing? What kind of faith are we walking in? Are we even seeing the signs of the times? Are we looking up, recognizing that our redemption draweth nigh? Or instead, are we playing video games? Are we stuck on our Xboxes and our Playstations and our Nintendo Switches? Are we stuck in front of our big screens? Are we stuck in front of the video games of our lives, the metaphorical video games? Footing around, dating out there, running around in these streets. Whose voice are we listening to? Are we moving with fear? I want all of Yahuwah's people, all of his children, to move with fear. Not fear of the circumstances, but fear of the hand of Yah. Hmm. I'm hearing a plane flying overhead, just like in the vision the Father gave me, where I, I heard the plane fly overhead. I turned and looked up, and I saw the plane machine gunning people down, sh firing off missiles against targets all around and I saw people running for their lives yes the father showed that to me he showed that to me about this nation this nation has shaken its fist in the most high's face almost for the last time and I want us to not merely be geostrategic observers merely being observers of geopolitics all of a sudden we're all movie critics after Will slaps Jada. And we're all psychologists and psychotherapists. All of a sudden, after Russia attacks Ukraine, we're all specialists in foreign affairs. Well, guess what? We're not. But you know who is? The Most High Yah. And we ought not to be so busy looking at these grand narratives that are presented before us and that are out on the world stage so that we can't hear the father's voice about everything that's happening these food shortages are beginning to rock people's worlds but the father told me in 2019 that he would bring complete and total famine upon the united states and you know what i believed him i didn't say well i don't know because i don't see it no i believed him i believed him when the Father warns of judgment, we need to believe him the first time. Just like Maya Angelou said, when people show you who they are, believe them the first time. They know what's in their hearts better than you do. You're sitting around hoping someone is something that they're not. And they're not going to be because it's not who they are. And we refuse to believe the empirical evidence, the data before our eyes. In the same way, we refuse to believe the empirical evidence of the voice of Yah, the most trustworthy individual there is, the creator of all, the one who knows the future. We refuse to believe him. And do you know how that makes him feel? We're so concerned about getting our feelings hurt and the feelings of our friends and our neighbors. We're so concerned with what others say. But do we know how Yahuwah feels? Would we disbelieve him and we doubt him and we force him to tell us stuff repeatedly over and over and over again? He loves us and he warns his children. 
and we sit up and we argue back and forth with him. Do you like it when you have to argue back and forth with your spouse, with your boyfriend, with your girlfriend, when you have to argue back and forth with your boss over and over again, round robin, constantly engaging, constantly pairing and thrusting, constantly fighting. But that's what we do to the most high Yah, the King of heaven, the King of Israel. As I said that, I'm sitting in front of a, I'm sitting in a parking lot of a grocery store in a Jewish section of town. And I just saw a man who was wearing his yarmulke, putting, pushing his cart into the designated area for carts. The king of Israel, not the king of the fake Israel, the king of the true Israel, the Israel that is actually called by his name, the bloodline people, not the descendants of the converts, the bloodline people. No one is going to make it into the kingdom who does not believe in the lamb of Yah, who takes away the sin of the world. But there is a people that is pretending to be something that they are not. And Yahuwah will judge it because we refuse to believe him. Instead, we believe whatever narratives those in power push on us. The 1947 narrative, the World War II Holocaust narrative, and now whatever narrative the world is saying, what we ought to be concerned about, that's what we're concerned about. And we're not concerned about the Most High's agenda. We're not concerned about the Most High's word, his commandment to bow the knee before him. He tells us that every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Yahushua HaMashiach is Adonai or Lord to the glory of Yahuwah. But we can't be bothered with that. We've got to get ready for our children's dance recital. We've got to make sure that our our children has children have completed their scholarship applications so they can go on and applying for college. Or oh, I just I really need a boyfriend and all of my problems would be solved if I just had a boyfriend. And then the the religious version of that, I need a believer. He should be six foot two and buff, but a believer. Why aren't we seeking the Father? Do we not know that if we seek Him, He will give us everything we need, we need, even the desires of our hearts, not simply the things that we want, but the wanting of the things He wants us to want? Brothers and sisters, I'm going to wrap this up. But the Father is very angry at our unbelief, the unbelief of the house of Yahuwah. Judgment begins at the house of Yahuwah. And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Do you know where they're going to appear? They're going to appear before the Father's white throne judgment seat. And actually, that's the white throne judgment seat of the Son. All judgment has been entrusted into the hands of the Son. The one who's holy, meek, and mild. Who was born in a manger. Oh. He's the Lamb of Yah. But he's also the Lion of the tribe of Judah. And he will mete out fierce punishment and wrath against all those who don't believe him. Who won't hear him. Who piously talk about how busy they are with their responsibilities. Instead of their primary responsibility of seeking Yahuwah with their whole heart, soul, mind, and strength. Oh, everything else takes precedence over seeking Yah. Everything else is more important than hearing His voice. Everything in the world can be made time for unless it has to do with hearkening unto and obeying the lamb we don't follow the lamb whithersoever he goes it's so funny there's so many people who in religious jargon talk about i'm part of the 144,000. i'm part of the special elite religious wise i'm following him i'm a warrior for yah i'm a warrior for god they might say 
but they know nothing of Yah. They know nothing of his voice. They don't follow him. They're too busy with the sitcoms and they're too busy with Netflix and they're too busy being entertained. They're too busy having opinions on every stupid actor and actress who sold their souls to the devil. They're too busy caught up with the narratives of this world instead of obeying the Lamb of Yah who takes away the sins of the world. It's not enough to just believe on him. Even the devils believe, James, Yahusha's brother taught us, and tremble. But do they obey? Do they follow him? Do they hearken unto him? Do they cast themselves at his feet, saying, Abba Yahuwah, forgive us. Father, find space to take me. Despite my sins, they will not turn and the Father will not pardon. This is a time of testing. We are entering the time of the supreme testing, the great tribulation. I'm not talking about the stupid Christian taxonomies of the, the dispensations and the tribulation period and this, that, and the other. We're talking about the tribulation of the end of this nation. Babylon has come up into the mind of Yahuwah Seveoth, and he is about to avenge for the blood of his children. This time of tribulation is a time of great judgment. And who can abide the fire of his coming? People will be saying to the rocks and to the hills, fall upon us and hide us from the face of the Lamb, from the wrath of the Lamb. Who can abide his coming? He is like a refiner's fire. People right now are paying good, hard money for underground bunkers where they think they'll be safe from nuclear strikes or from the chaos that will soon ensue in this nation and in the West. But you know what? They're going to be, it's going to get so dark that they will one day say to these bunkers that they're in and to the hills that are covering them and the ground, they're going to say, fall upon us and hide us from the wrath of the Lamb. I hope you're ready. I hope I'm ready. I hope all of his people are ready. We are the children of the Most High Yahuwah, his ambassadors. But how do we conduct ourselves? Do we believe in him or not? I hope you believe. I hope you're ready. Father in heaven, make your people ready. Give us eyes to see and give us, as you promised to Solomon, listening ears of a, in the heart to hear and to obey and cause us to love you more than we love anything else in this world. In Yahusha's holy and mighty name, let it be done according to your word. So be it. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah.